Hello, I'm Mac, at least for a day, and everything's going to be okay. We've just had the 2.24 patch to No Man's Sky, and it's got some pretty neat changes to the game, so that's why I'm doing a video on it. I don't always do a video if it's just bug fixes, but there's some pretty major changes. Uh, the first one is a very slight change, but it might get some people upset, or they might like it, depending on what their opinion was. So, for a while, well, this was th this was different in VR. It, when they added VR, trade terminals would automatically go to the menu where you could sell things. And I found that pretty disconcerting when I first started VR. Um, but just recently they made it so that uh, the me it always goes straight to the menu uh, in every mode of the game, not just, not just VR. Because there used to be this other menu where you would click an option in order to open up the actual buy and sell menu. But that's not what was changed this time. This time they made it so that it defaults to buy. Um, which I don't get why that was they changed that because I almost always sell when I open the trade terminal. So it actually worked out pretty well that it defaulted to sell. The only reason I can think of that they would change the default to buy is because that's what the default is for the nanite or you know the upgrade modules that you buy with nanites so I, I guess I guess people complained about it for one thing they probably wouldn't have changed if people hadn't complained but also it, it kind of streamlines streamlines it so that the default is always buy it, it is kind of confusing if the nanite trading defaults to buy and the unit trade terminal defaults to sell. So I guess it's okay that they've made them all the same, but it was kind of convenient for me for the default to be sell in the trade terminal because very rarely do I ever buy anything from the trade terminal. So this means that every time I open the trade terminal now, I'm going to have to click sell before I do something. Otherwise, I'll accidentally buy something. So that adds an extra step to me. Because very rarely is there anything useful to me in here, except maybe if I you know, need to buy a bunch of oxygen or something. But usually I'm just selling. So whatever. That's just a change they made. OK, the next few uh, changes are a lot more interesting. Um, well, this one's a little less. Uh, we now have a setting for multiplayer, a new multiplayer setting for edit base terrain. So this is a new one that we didn't have before. I guess it was possible for anyone to edit terrain at your base, and that's definitely bad. That, that opens it up to trolling, um, griefing, because... Like, you can set it so they can't add base parts, but anybody could come along and use a terrain manipulator to, like, bury your base. So it's really good that they added that. So that's definitely a good change. Um, oh, and they also, it says that they restored the friends-only multiplayer setting, which I'm pretty sure that was there still. I remember that being there, so I don't know why that was a change. Maybe on PC the friends only setting was removed. I don't know. But that's what it says in the patch notes. Um, next is... Okay, here's, here's the good one. So we're going to go to my freighter to show this. And we'll be doing some other stuff in my freighter as well. I could look at it from here actually, but I'm going to go ahead and get to my freighter for this. So they made it so that, okay, so you know they added new freighter tech. Um, they added, actually, all the new freighter tech that they added wasn't really needed in my opinion. They added the thing that lets you 
teleport to and from your freighter, but we were already able to teleport things to our freighters. So they made it so we could teleport from our freighter when we're not on our freighter, which is kind of good. But the problem is if you don't have the upgrade, you can no longer teleport things to your freighter from anywhere. So now they made it a requirement to have the freighter teleporter thingy. And then the other thing that was completely unneeded um, was they added red star, green star, blue star warp drives to the freighter. So now you have to get those upgrades in order to go to those color stars with your freighter. The only reason it's useful for them to add that was... I'm ranting and this this isn't even what it was changed in in this. This has already been since the last since the synthesis update, but I think it's really stupid that they added the see this is the indium. Oh, that's the that's the Here it is. Yeah, this is the one that lets you go to red stars. Oh wow. They made it so that you have to use cadmium to do the red star warp. That means you have to get to a red star first with a normal ship in order to get the cadmium. That's really messed up. And then same with this, you have to you have to go to a green star with a regular ship first and then get the emeril to make this warp reactor to go to green stars. No, this is the green star one. Where's... Oh yeah, and here's the blue star one. That's crazy that... In order to go to a blue star, you have to go to a blue star and get the indium. Thankfully, the, the element requirements is different for the ship ones. So it's actually possible to get to these color stars so that you can make the warps for your freighter. But yeah, it was, it was completely needless to add these warps because we could already warp to the different color stars with our freighter. Only thing it serves to do is to put another wall up so that new players can't go to those color stars. Because it was, as soon as you got your first freighter, which you get one for free, uh, the first time you do a freighter battle, uh, new players could go ahead and go to red, green, and blue stars because freighters were able to go to any color star for some reason. Um, so all that adding this does is prevent new players from going to those color stars and now it's a lot harder to get your freighter able to go to those color stars because it, the the items to unlock these are super rare and yeah anyway that's not what was changed what was changed was they added tech slots so they really messed things up because they made it so that you couldn't even use those things on old freighters, but now we have more tech slots. So now there's six tech, tech slots instead of four, which actually still isn't enough slots. There's still too few slots. There, um, if you put the matter beam, which lets you teleport things to and from your freighter, actually no, it's okay because the indium one the indium one should let you go to any color star so yeah we have exactly the right amount of space so we can have the three warp upgrades that let you go farther and then you can install just the indium one once you get it and that will let you go to blue stars but the really stupid thing is it's completely pointless to have the red star or green star ones because you have to already be able to go to those color stars with a normal ship. So no one would ever install the red or green ones into their freighter. They would just wait until they unlock the blue star one, then they would go to a blue star with a normal ship, get the indium, put it in their freighter, and then they'd be able to go to every color star with the freighter. I don't know. It, it's very poorly thought out. But the good thing is we finally have more than four tech slots in our freighter so that we can actually use these new tech in our old freighters. It was possible to buy a new freighter, but a lot of people were upset because a lot of people had S-rank freighters that they didn't want to give up in order to get the two extra tech slots. 
So thankfully they've, um, what's the term, uh, backwards engineered, no that's not it, uh, retroactive, retroactively updated all freighters. This is the freighter that I had before the update um, so that they now have more tech slots. So anyways, that was a long rant <laughs> for that one little change. Okay, now the best thing to this thing is they, well, two changes to ships. One thing is when you upgrade a ship's class, which I, which I just recently upgraded one of my ships to S rank, they didn't have as good a stats. So they updated it so the upgraded ships have better stats. And they also made it so that haulers, fighters, and explorers can now have better stats than exotic ships. So exotic ships, of course, are always S rank. Um, the problem was their stats were so much better that even an S rank fighter would have less uh, damage than an S rank exotic. And now that it's possible to upgrade an exotic to max inventory size, that made exotics better than every ship no matter what. So they increased the stats on haulers, fighters, and explorers for their specialized stats. So fighters have the best damage, explorers have the best hyperdrive range, and haulers have the best um, have the best shield. But we're going to test that. Luckily I just upgraded my fighter ship to S rank, so we're going to see if it really has better stats than my exotic ship. So right now it's damage potential, damage potential is 262 and its maneuverability is 429. That maneuverability is also a specialty of fighters and, and explorers. Explorers and fighters have good manu maneuverability, haulers have bad. So we're gonna see if my fighter now has better stats than my exotic. So 262 damage potential. And part of this is going to be skewed by the fact that this ship doesn't have any upgrades, but we can we can still compare the white line um, where its position is and see if it compares with where my exotic is. Because the yellow line tells you it's how it's been changed by upgrades and the white line tells you its base stat without upgrades. Um, by upgrades I mean tech, not being upgraded by other stuff. So yeah, it is better. Uh, um, you can tell by the white line, because the white line was like right in the middle with my fighter, but on my exotic the white line is a bit lower, and it's, it's being increased by um, upgrades. So with upgrades, my exotic is about the same as my fighter on damage potential. In fact, it's just a little less. 262 is my fighter's damage potential, potential and this my exotic is 237 with upgrades. And then maneuverability is a bit better than my fighter with upgrades, but once I put upgrades into my fighter, it should have better maneuverability. Because my fighter right now has 429, but it has no upgrades that increase maneuverability. Um, and my exotic is a little better. So, um, yeah, it, it worked. Fighters can have better, better damage potential and probably maneuverability. Um, I have to confirm that. But definitely better damage potential on fighters now um, with this change. And that's really good. So there's actually a point to having fighters, explorers, and haulers again. Although haulers, haulers are still a lot less useful now that every ship can be upgraded to max, max slots. Because um, the only strength that haulers have is shield, and that's really not a great, really not a great stat. It's like the weakest stat. Um, so I'm probably not even going to get a hauler, but. Um, I definitely like the higher damage potential of fighter and the higher hyperdrive range of explorer. All right, there's just a few more changes that I want to talk about. Um, 
Oh, new stats are now visible on the analysis visor for ships. Ooh, there, you can see it. So before we could only see that, you know, that it was a fighter, that it was S-Class, and that it cost 71.5 million units. But now you can see its damage potential, shield strength, hyperdrive range, and maneuverability. In fact, now I can actually see the core stat as well and it actually tells me the amount. We could see the bar on the menu, but now when I scan it, you know the actual core stats, which is awesome, which means I can, oh man, I, if I'd have known this, I could have compared it a second ago, but we can go ahead and do that. So the core damage potential on my fighter is 231.6, and we can compare that to the core damage potential of my exotic, which is, Whoa, 197.7. So yeah, my fighter's core damage potential is a lot um, a lot more, or quite a bit more. And then maneuverability on my exotic is 421.3 for its core stat. And my fighter's is... 429.5, so it's only, no, sorry, 421.3. Oh, it's exactly the same. Okay. So the core maneuverability is exactly the same for an S exotic and an S fighter. That's interesting. Wow, it's exactly the same. So that must mean it's always exactly the same if both of them are exactly the same. Um, which makes me wonder. I don't have an S rank ex uh, explorer right now. Whoa. Wow, yeah. My A rank explorer has way less maneuverability, but of course that's because it's A rank. I can't I can't wait till I upgrade my explorer to S rank, then I can compare. I'm guessing maybe exotics, fighters, and explorers all have four to one point three maneuverability at S rank, I'm guessing. So that means that maneuverability, that means fighters don't have higher maneuverability at all. Um, they just have good maneuverability, which is the same as exotics and explorers. And then I know haulers have a lot lower maneuverability, which makes them really unuseful. Um, but they just have good shield strength and also fairly good hyperdrive range. But, oh my gosh, my explorer hyperdrive range is horrible. It's way lower than the core of my exotic. Man, that's horrible hyperdrive range. Oh well, anyway, we'll do more <laughs> ship stat comparison now that we can see the exact numbers by scanning the ships. That's a pretty cool change. So now instead of comparing where the bars are, we can know the exact amounts for the core amounts and all that. Cool, all right. and. I think the main reason they add, added this is so that people can show off their stats in the Space Anomaly, in the Nexus, because you can see other players' ships in there, so you can <laughs> compare everybody's stats, which is pretty cool. Um, they, fixed, they fixed displayed shield strength stat, so I guess there was a problem with the shield strength stat being displayed correctly, which is kind of an improvement for haulers, I guess. It will let people know what the shield strength for haulers actually is, if we weren't able to see it before. Um, then there's a fix for vortex cubes and submerged relics not being destroyed by the terrain manipulator. Then there's several other bugs and crash fixes. I'm gonna do one more thing um, this isn't this isn't in the patch notes, but I heard that we've already got the newest head uh, in the Quicksilver exchange. So I'm gonna just go ahead and show that in this video what new head we've got. I I, I just heard that we've got a new head. I don't know what it is yet. So let's go in and look at it. Oh, 
<laughs> That's funny that that player is standing right by their ship. They look just like NPCs that stand outside their ships. Ooh, wow. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and try this out. I can. Oh no. The stat change isn't working for other players' ships still. In fact, there's absolutely no info except for the class, which you can tell just by looking at it. I can see the stats for my ship, but you can't see the stats for other people's ship. So either there's a bug and you can't see other people's ships, or they just decided not to let you see other people's ship stats. What? That was weird. Oh, I didn't know you could see stuff about the space anomaly. Status observing, current subroutine depth testing, directive ambient protection. <laughs> Weird. But yeah, that's a real shame that the stats aren't working for other players. I'm pretty sure that's a bug. Because I, I think they've done bug fixes for being able to scan other players' ships before to try and fix it, but it looks like it's broken again. So that's something they're going to have to fix. But anyway, let's go see what the newest head is. Ah, it's uh, Tethys. It's the Lizard Man head. Cool. Yeah, so Lizard Man head is next. And we've had 2.24, which has added some... Some needed changes. Biggest thing is increased tech slots to freighter. Um, fighters, haulers, explorers can now have better specialized stats than exotics. And we can now scan at least our own ships and NBC ships. They still haven't fixed it for other players. But yeah, some pretty good fixes here in. 2.24 update to No Man's Sky. Pretty impressive that Hello Games is working even though we're super close to Christmas holiday. I guess this is the last bug patch they're going to do before the holidays. They always they always take the holiday season off. Um, but anyway, that does it for this little patch video. I've been Mac. Thank you for joining me for a day. And remember, everything is going to be okay.